Now, Martha, the search is back on now for hundreds still trapped by Colorado's deadly flooding. Rushing waters, washing out roads and pouring in the basements and throwing cars around like dice. Better weather helping air rescue crews get to those sticking to the high ground to stay dry. 3,000 rescued so far as water levels start to recede. 3,000 so far, and you look at the map here of Colorado, and you see the amount of water, whether it's down here in Colorado Springs or specifically up around the Boulder area north of Denver, Colorado. i uh, got a little bit of a gauge here right now. The blue is the worst. That's up to a foot of rain on the right here. Uh, the green is six to nine inches, and the pink is three to six. Advance at one time, and it will take you up into Denver and up into the Boulder area, okay? So you see how this area in pink and green has been just hammered with water. Uh, advance it one more time, specifically on Boulder here. It's blue at the moment. It goes to an even brilliant blue, a 9 to 12 inches. And this is where you've been seeing that water come through, uh, the helicopter rescues, and these people uh, watching their homes literally uh, disappear beneath their feet. To the north and east is Evans, Colorado, and that's where Lisa Acuna is standing by live now. And you're, uh, you're in uh, northeastern Colorado where all the damage is happening now. Lisa, what's happening there today? That's right, Bill. And you mentioned how the water is receding. That's actually starting to happen here in Evans as well. But when that does happen, a whole new group of hazards is left for the people to deal with. And we can look back into this closed off area here in Evans. Those are two officials with the fire protection district here examining the danger. You can see the power lines that have been downed when the flood waters came through this area and took over this roadway. What also happened here is that the water treatment plants went out, which means that folks weren't able to flush their toilets, they weren't able to take showers, and they weren't able to wash their hands. In addition to all of that, you have all of this stagnant water, which has brought on the mosquitoes. The West Nile virus is still prevalent in this part of the state and will be until it freezes here. So they still have that to contend with. In Sedgwick, Colorado, which is east of this area and close to the Nebraska border, they are still dealing with the floodwaters that are coming into that area and taking over. Evacuations are underway and people are still trying to get out. They can't flush their toilets there as well. And I mentioned Nebraska. People in Nebraska and areas of that state are being told to prepare to evacuate because the Colorado floodwaters are headed there. Bail back wow, to you. Wow, that, that'll be the next ripple in the story then. People are trying to save their belongings. How are they doing? They are. Yeah, they are. They're doing the best that they can, but so many of their items are covered in mud. And so they're walking out of their homes with all of these items. Um, but these items that are covered in mud, that means that they're also covered in sewage. They have chemicals and it's actually kind of a dangerous situation. So even though they're able to get out with some things, there's a good likelihood they're not going to be able to hang on to it. According to the health department here, there's uh, a lot. There are a lot of people who are talking about the devastation of just losing everything. Take a listen. There's no words. I mean, I'm just in shock to see my home, you know, that I'll never get my things that I own. We're also expecting a little bit more rain today in the forecast, the last thing we need in Colorado, well, Bill. Indeed, you're right about that. Thanks, Alicia Cunha there. Evans, Colorado. There.